What's up guys? Welcome back to Amazing RC. Thank you for joining me in video number four of my how-to customization Hot Wheels series. I'm very excited. This is the chassis and bodywork video. Super, super easy stuff. Most of you can probably figure this out on your own, but there are some huge mistakes I made along the way that by watching this video, you're not going to make that same mistake. You're not going to send a car to your buddy, and it's not going to fall apart. I promise you. Rest in peace, Moon Eyes panel van. Man, that was such a cool ride. So, very simple, super easy to get started. Not many tools, not much really involved in it. Ton of chassis work had to go into getting this one right. Cool Ford Bronco opening doors. I mean, the wheels are literally just... There, there's a paper-thin margin in between the wheel and the wheel well. This is even closer. And the whole deal with my cars and your cars, as soon as you're done watching all these videos and doing this on your own, a lot of people, they customize their Hot Wheels car and it doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't do anything. And it looks really, really good. My car, you can track. You can hand this to your kid and he can play with it. It's going to be just as good as a stock, sometimes even better, Hot Wheels car. You just don't want it to fall apart. You, you don't know if your buddy, even if you're making it for yourself and no one's ever going to touch it, you can have this on your shelf and your buddy can come over or your neighbor's kids and they're going to grab your car and they're going to go, man, this thing is cool. And, you know, if it's not made right, the wheels are going to fall off. You're going to be upset and the kid's going to have a big giant question mark on his face. So, very simple stuff. We'll start with the chassis. Now, if you want to take big old giant wheels and put them on a teeny tiny little wheel car, it can be done. All you're going to want to do is first, just get your wheels in there, get them sized up, figure out how much bigger your little wheel wells need to be on your chassis, figure out if it needs to be deeper. As you can see on this car, the wheels stick out from the body itself. And if that's not what you're looking for, there's a good easy way to get them to sink on into the body itself. So all you wanna do is take your cool little chassis here, and I like to make these little dowels, man. I've got, these are just, you know, little dowels, little square dowels from like Walmart. And I've had these for forever. You can see I've painted all over them. This is one for the larger wheel wells. This is one for the smaller wheel wells. You'll see it fits right in there. And all you want to do is just get your little piece of sandpaper. I've already got this one made up because I was working on, on Dad's car here. I mean, it took quite a bit of work to get those big old fatty fats to fit. Not only in the chassis itself, you know, a bunch of chassis had to come out of there, but to get them to fit inside the body, super easy to do. You're just going to take a piece of sandpaper, get your little dowel, figure out which size you need, and you're just going to roll this thing in this sandpaper. Get it nice and creased up on one side, and then crease it up on the other side so that you can hold it. Now, I taped this one. But, I mean, you don't even have to do that. Just get it to where you can hold it. Nice, crisp lines. You don't want it to roll underneath that piece of dowel. You want it to be nice and flat. And you're just going to take this. I like to put it on something that's a little soft. I've got this little multi-purpose foam pad here. But something that, you know, it's not, it's going to kind of hold on to it. And just, you don't have to push. This is not something you want to jam on down as hard as you can. But you're just going to kind of, and if it doesn't go, just pull one direction for a couple times. Once you get that to pull, you'll start to be able to move it back and forth. And like I said, I'm not pushing on that. I'm kind of letting the sandpaper do its own thing. But you'll notice within just a few little, few little pushes, we've got some dust here. That's our wheel well, you know, working itself out. And then just get your wheel, put it back in there, see if you need some more. Just go ahead and get all four corners just like that. If you need the, the chassis to actually widen this direction and this direction, remember you wrapped your sandpaper here. Just start kind of pushing it to one side as you're going and push it to the other side as you're going. And not only will you get depth, but you will also get your width as well. You can fit any size wheel you want to on a teeny tiny little wheel well car. Trust me. These were very small wheels that went on this car. And now we've got the big crummy crumbs, big fatty fats on there. 
Same thing with this one. Even though those wheels don't look big, the wheels that came on this premium car were considerably smaller. These are actually wheels off of a Matchbox car. And it took me not only chassis work, but body work as well to get these to fit. This took a long time, but I got it right. And I tell you, it rolls. This is one of the best rolling track cars that I've got. So, super simple chassis work. Kind of get on in there and work it till your wheels fit. Now remember, by this time you've already got your axles done. That was the video before this. So you know what's needed to get them to fit in your chassis. Once they fit in your chassis, take your interior out, take your glass out, get it, get your chassis put back in where your car is, get it snapped together, and see if those wheels are going to rub on your wheel wells. See if they're still sticking out some. If they are, you know that you're going to have to work out a little bit more of your chassis to bring those wheels in. Once you do that, if you need to get some more equity out of your actual body here, super simple. Just get your little old Dremel out. Most of us RC guys, most of us Hot Wheels guys, all custom people, we all got one of these. Get your little old Dremel out. Get your little round sanding wheel. They usually come in two common sizes. You got the big giant one for the big wheel wells. And then you got a small one, which believe it or not, will fit right in that little tiny wheel well. Now what you want to do first, instead of just putting it straight in and going down and trying to eat up into your hood, kind of get behind the wheel well a little bit and start working out that inside lip. That's where you want to, you know, have, you, you want that to be removed. That way your tire can actually fit inside the car and behind the wheel well without changing the shape of the wheel well. Now sometimes you're going to have to take, you know, some of the wheel well out. This is my buddy Jason's car out of uh, Canada. And I tell you, this whole entire front wheel well is coming off because it's getting big old crummy crumbs and the fatty fats. And where this wheel well is, it's kind of contoured exactly the size of the tire. So that whole thing's got to come off. It's going to look so dope with big old treaded tires right here instead of these big wheel wells. Can't wait to get this one finished up. So we've got our cool little tool here. You got this all cleaned up. You know, you got... You know, your wheel wells all cleaned up. And now, without your interior, without your glass, you snap it together and everything fits. Fits perfectly. You got a really nice car, but you're still not done. Now the most important thing is coming, and that's getting your interior to fit back in the car. Because now that you've added your brass axles, or even if you just did, if you didn't do custom axles and you just put your regular axles back in, if you did any type of larger wheel, you're probably going to need to mess with this. But there's a rule that I messed up for a while until my buddy Uncle Lee's car fell apart at his house. I used to just cut these little tabs off. Now in the last video I showed you what these tabs are. Every single Hot Wheels car has one. And what it does is it holds down the stock axle. Basically you got your chassis that's got this little V inside and then you got a little little N right here and they kind of just bam just like that to where you got a hole right in the center and that's where the axle goes and as you can see each one of these cars has one I used to lop that top one off because it saved time and if I'm gluing the axles down what do I care about it trapping the axle down well it doesn't matter how good the glue is you have a very good opportunity for someone to push down on the car a little bit and it pop that axle up so you can't cut these what you do first you just go ahead you got your axles in there you take your take your interior and you just pop it back where it goes and you will notice if it is not right, it'll the center will be riding up. You'll be able to see a little tiny gap in between it. One side will be up higher than the other one. It won't go down perfectly. What you're going to want to do is get inside that little nook that's in your interior. Take that same piece of sandpaper that you just made. Use one edge of it. And you're just going to get in there and knock that down just a tiny bit. Remember, your custom brass axles are just a hair bigger than your stock axles, so you don't need to do this much. I recommend you go ahead and shave a little bit, put it on there and check it. Shave a little bit, put it on there and check it. Once you get this top one nice and flat, boom, it'll snap in place. You'll be able to see the axle coming out of both sides. 
go ahead and do the back same exact thing get it worked out once you get this thing right it is going to sit flat you should be able to take the center of your chassis and the center of the interior and push them together and it should move that means that either one of these axles isn't holding that up it'll sit flat lock right in place once you get that now you can move on to your glass get your get your body here boom toss your glass in it's time, time to check it all out see if everything fits put your interior in boom you got all that nice and solid in there you got your axle in there you got your chassis get that put in here and put it all together if you can snap this car back together ready to glue ready to paint whichever one you're going to do if you can get it to snap back together and you can take your finger tap on the windshield and it doesn't make a sound if it does this and you can hear it that means there's a gap in there somewhere that means that your axle front or back is being held up somehow and it has created a gap if it's quiet that means you're locked in you're ready to rock and roll if you're going to glue the car now you can glue the car that'll be the next video if you're ready to paint the car that'll be the next video you're you're good to go on to the next step but getting this axle trapped down is the biggest thing i could push as hard as i want on this remember there's no gap in between the tire it's not going to bind because those axles are solid and they're trapped down same thing with this car it's not going to break. This car, same thing. It's all in getting this step done right. Now, there's one more thing, which I ran into, and this is brand new. This is basically the steps to a normal custom car as far as your chassis and your bottom work. Chew everything out that you possibly need without chewing too much to get everything to fit and not make any noise. However, I've run into a new issue, and it's with my dad's car. I did all that, okay? Except when I put my interior in, I noticed that it didn't drop in super easy. And the reason for that is, is I put so much tire in here and I sucked it into the chassis, took so much chassis out that those very important little tabs that I told you not to lop off, they are now resting in between the tires and they are binding the tires up. Not only in the rear, but the front. So now, in this very, seldom it's the very first one, I've probably done 100 cars, this is the very first time this has ever happened. I will have to lock these off. Bing, 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 bing. And I will now have to find a way to trap these axles down so that when I build this car, not only will the wheels be able to go, but the glass, the interior, and everything I'll have to add something to it. Not exactly sure what yet. But this is this is a rare case. This is zero times has this happened except for now. But I'll have to find a way because I'm not going to send this out without the axles being trapped down. That's how important it is. That's basically what it is for chassis work. Take as much out as you possibly can. Get you some super easy to build tools. Follow those rules. Do not get rid of those tabs. Just work them out the tiniest bit that you can unless they're binding your wheels. Get back with me on that. I'll tell you how I solve this problem here real soon. Guys, the next video is paint. That's the one a lot of you guys have been waiting for. I've got a bunch of cars to paint. This is going to be black and white. Very excited about that. It's going to look like a normal 57. I've got my buddy Will Thompson's brother's car. We're just doing a complete color swap on that. We're going to paint the rims. This thing, the whole thing's got to come apart. We're going to paint the entire thing pearl white and get that sprayed up. And then... We got this to be painted as well. This is that 96 Impala. This is going to get two matte black stripes down that thing. Man, I'm super excited. But the next video is going to have these three cars in it. All three are getting painted. So look out for that here very soon. If you guys have any questions about chassis work, hit me up in the comment section below. But until the next video, it's Brian, Amazing RC. We'll get you guys another cool, cool video very, very soon.